What I'd like to try and cover briefly, um, which will be, I think, recap for a few people, but hopefully new information for most of you, is the broader map collections beyond Edinburgh uh, that uh, we, we have to look at geo-referenced mapping, the newer web map services and tile map services that allow us not just to deliver these as Google mashups, but also to allow us to more easily embed these in other applications and in other websites. This moves on really to collaborative web mapping projects, giving a few examples of those. Uh, the historical mapping API that we launched earlier this year. GeoReferencer, which is very much uh, a shiny new application. We're just in the process of launching that now. And a brief look at uh, a few new website additions, things being scanned and uh, projects. Obviously, for 20,000 maps, I can't hope in a, a minute to give any more than a, a surface impression of them, but to try to encourage you to explore our website, to see the great diversity of them. In terms of mapping in Scotland, we tend to feel things begin with the pioneering work of Timothy Pont uh, over 400 years ago. And Pont's work formed the basis of the first atlas of Scotland, Johann Blau's Atlas Novus of 1654. We have uh, also connected to most of our uh, map applications the texts that accompany them. It's very important to remember that, not just because of its relevance to other projects this afternoon of passing and of geo-referencing, but because also we're keen to make available these resources as they were originally uh, were. And for Blau's Atlas, it was very much a 150 pages of text and 50 maps, and it's important, therefore, to give both texts and maps in terms of giving an impression of uh, the real thing. We have special collections of military maps. The Board of Ordnance Collection has fine views and plans of fortifications in Scotland, particularly in the 18th century. It includes battle plans, um, views of, of towns, prospects of towns, very much complementing the more overhead or bird's eye perspective of uh, maps. In the 19th century, a range of, of maps by private individuals, including uh, John Wood. Admiralty charts, which uh, give a wealth of information about coastal areas, so of interest from a landward perspective as well. And estate plans, even though the National Archives of Scotland is the main repository of those in Scotland, a significant number are held by NLS and are bound up with estate papers. Although most of what I have to say this afternoon is very much bound up with geo-referencing and of interpreting maps very much as literal representations of, of what's out there, as has been alluded to, particularly by Richard and um, Bob, it's very important to be skeptical about these sources, to read maps at different levels, and to understand that very often they give misrepresentations or potentially dishonest views of what is, what is actually out there at a particular point in time, and trying to decode the maps, of so trying to understand what we might call cartographic silences, the things that are, are missed, that are not there on the map, is, is, is a very interesting process, and it can allow us to read maps much more intelligently. Um, there are many examples of, of this kind of reader beware, uh, but the example I have here relates to, to Broughton. Um, Broughton in the 19th century, as a, an older village, was gradually encroached upon by the expanding new town. And many of the plans had these big boulevards that were literally plowing through a higgledy-piggledy array of streets. And this is James Kay's plan of uh, Broughton, which um, shows very much a, a barony street going right the way through. The real position down on the ground um, which is actually closer to the position still today, is, is much better recorded by Johnston's plan of Edinburgh and Leith, and in fact other plans in the 19th century. And what Kay's plan was, was doing, along with many other plans of Edinburgh, was hypothesizing of trying to read the future and go along with plans by town councils or, or viewers and other people involved in the development of Edinburgh. 
but they didn't always, always get it right. Most of our digitized maps are necessarily out of copyright, but I did want to mention as well that we have the last 15 years of very detailed Ordnance Survey Master Map, the most detailed mapping for the United Kingdom at 1 to 1250 uh, scale for urban areas. Uh, this can't be put onto our website, but can be read in uh, the National Library reading rooms. And in terms of our, our website, I hope uh, many of you will be familiar uh, with it, but the essence of it is sets of browsable lists of information. We could say select maps of Scotland, see a, a chronological list, scroll down to select John Ainsley's map of 1789, select uh, uh, the sheet of that and then uh, we can view and zoom in on any of these sheets to see it uh, in, in detail. In the last five years we've put a lot, a lot more effort into georeferencing and trying to exploit the growing potential of doing more with these maps and we now have over 5,000 georeferenced maps of Scotland, which we make available in, in different ways, in terms of applications, as overlays on top of uh, Google or Bing mapping, uh, as an API, and a, a new tool, georeferencer, which allows collaborative online georeferencing. Just to briefly give an idea of what the applications look like for the Roy Military Survey, a very useful source of uh, information, uh, the essential map of the 18th century covering all of mainland Scotland. Um, Georeferencing has allowed us to present it in a, an easier way so people can just zoom in on an overall map to uh, any particular place and then pan around and see it. And it's also possible to use the tools on, on this side of county boundaries of parish boundaries and gazetteers of uh, place names to search as well. By using these gazetteers it can just bring up the map automatically that's in the right location providing it's been georeferenced. We can do that too for ordnance survey mapping. The six inch to the mile is very much the, the bread and butter of, uh, of, of mapping uh, in terms of the most useful detail uh, mapping by Ordnance Survey uh, for the first time that they covered uh, Scotland. And we can zoom on in on the map. Uh, these red lines you can hopefully see are the boundaries of those sheets. It's possible to select those and view an individual sheet in detail. But it's also possible having cropped and mosaic these maps together, which is, is no mean feat, let me tell you, um, to just keep zooming in and display this as a, a, a seamless layer. We're trying to do that steadily across other types of mapping in different ways and from various means in terms of external funding or collaborative projects or volunteers we've managed to get a range of other uh, georeferenced maps which I'll also show you by way of looking at web map services and tile map services. Essentially, uh, the Open Geospatial Consortium's web map service enables dynamic production of maps on the web using basic parameters such as the map layer, the map extent, data format, and projection. And the web map server simply delivers up an image, like a JPEG image or a ping image, for a specified area. And we, first of all, use the standard web map service for delivering layers of historic mapping on top of a, a Google-type interface. This shows uh, the six inch to the mile as a web map service layer. And the advantage of web map services is as an international standard, many other websites can automatically consume a web map service. And uh, an example of that would be the Gazetteer for Scotland, uh, which consumes our historic map layer as a web map service. 
There are various ways of improving upon the speed of a web map service, but for us we found it problematic, and speed is of the essence so much for internet delivery. And we've managed to achieve much better speeds of delivering historic maps by using tile map services. And in essence, a tile map service pre-creates tiles at a set of zoom levels. What this uh, application, which is quite a useful online application, shows is that the way that Google and uh, Bing and Yahoo all present their maps is through a regular projection, the global spherical Mercator projection. And by dividing the, the world into a set of zoom levels and then two numbers, uh, an easting and a, a northing, it's possible to define any particular tile which uniquely defines the precise area that's the same area in all these services. And that can be set up as a URL, as we can see here. This is the tile map service here with a zoom level and then these two numbers. And these two sheets of different types of mapping can uh, be presented as a tile that will automatically appear in the right place. Very clever software can do this, fortunately, at the touch of a button. So you don't need to know anything more than how to download uh, great programs like MapTiler, which is what we've used, free open source software. And it can pick up a georeferenced file and create a tile set um, relatively quickly. Through this, we've been able to make available much larger quantities of georeference mapping, including detailed ordnance survey town plans. Uh, this shows detail for Edinburgh as a, an overlay on top of virtual Earth. Um, we've also, through collaborating with the Scottish Environment Protection Agency, received georeference versions of the bathymetrical survey of freshwater lochs, which was a very useful survey showing loch depths from 100 years ago. They were very keen to georeference for their own water management purposes, supply georeference versions back to us. So then it was a very easy process to present these as tile sets so that you can zoom on in very quickly and compare them to the, for the present day. Uh, we had a student the year, a year ago who uh, was interested in military mapping of Belgium and uh, did this with uh, historic um, 1940s mapping and uh, again was kind enough to give the results uh, back to us. So rather unusually focusing on Scotland on our, our website, we do actually have some military maps of Belgium as well but it's really to reinforce the point that we're not fussy at all where it comes from. If people out there are happy to georeference it and uh, give the results back to us then um, we'll happily put it on our website and they can also put it on their website too. In terms of uh, collaborative applications, we have tried to promote these, but generally other projects have tended to pick up on the idea that uh, they, they may have uh, an ability to easily use to ingest mapping that we've already made available. And an example of that we we're very keen to collaborate with, it's a very nice website that the Scottish Rights of Way Society put together, their Heritage Paths website. This shows the roots of paths that have some heritage value. They might be Salter's Ways or Mineral Ways, Minister's Ways. They had created the roots on the same geographic basis and therefore it's very easy to dynamically bring our historic maps into uh, this application. And the potential to do this is, is literally endless. Uh, the process of doing it is very easy indeed. It simply involves a little manipulation of uh, HTML.